Welcome to Taste of Life, an interactive travel series with a gourmet in us all. In today's Epicurean Odyssey, we travel to La Belle Provence, Quebec, where we scale new heights of adventure and beauty at Mont Saint Anne. The top of the mountain is only the tip of the iceberg at Mont Saint Anne. The area is blessed with a culture, history, and current lifestyle that are firmly linked to the land and sea. We get a taste of agricultural traditions on the island of Orleans. We learn how grizzly smoked salmon combines the flavors of woods and sea. And we have our interest in bees and their sweet contribution to cuisine peaked at the Bee Museum. Right at the foot of the mountain is our fine dining choice, Chateau Mont Saint Anne. There, executive chef Jose Mariello creates a signature salmon dish. Enjoy, bon appetit. We'll be right back. The drama of the mountains, the mighty St. Lawrence Seaway, and striking pastoral beauty. I'm Catherine Blythe for Taste of Life. Here in the shadow of Mont Saint Anne, a stone's throw from historic Quebec City, is the cradle of French Canadian culture. It's where a civilization was born and nurtured on the riches of the land and sea. Mont Saint Anne is a chameleon of resorts, changing color and appeal from season to season. Why wait for the snow? The mountains, stunning vistas, and leafy trails beckon visitors year round. Excitement and adventure unfold here too, on mountain biking trails that host a World Cup race every year. And that still leaves room for enthusiasts of other sports looking for challenging terrain. But Mont Saint Anne first made her name on the slopes. Of course, the experience now is a far cry from the early days over half a century ago, when skiers walked up the 2,050 foot vertical drop to ski back down. Now they can conserve their energy for all the fun. A skier at Mont Saint Anne is spoiled by choice. There's 400 acres of skiable terrain, and while the hill is known for exhilarating black and double black runs with over 50 trails to choose from, there's a run for everyone. Skiing or boarding down the hill and following the sun. Three sides of Mont Saint Anne are skiable, so you can begin on one face in the early morning and end up on the west side, still basking in the sun late into the afternoon. It's no wonder Mont Saint Anne hasn't reached the peak of her popularity. It's still rising with increasing numbers of visitors from English Canada, the Eastern States, and overseas. I've been told by people coming from Europe that they've seen views from top of mountains and you're used to seeing other mountains, but when you look at the south side also, you have the St. Lawrence River, you have the Orléans Island and the south shore of the river, and it's so beautiful. It's we say it's breathtaking, but I think, I think it's, it's true that and it, from the top of the mountain, it's some of the most beautiful views that you can have in the, the whole region. If Mont Saint Anne crowns the region, its heart must be the vividly historical Quebec City, only a short drive away. There's no mistaking its role as lively guardian of the mighty St. Lawrence River and the past. Quebec is the only walled city north of Mexico and the only North American World Heritage City. 
The 17th and 18th century roots of modern-day Quebecers are embedded in the mortar of the homes and monuments their ancestors built on their strategic hill. And there's also embedded here a lust for life that springs out in street celebrations throughout the year. Mont-Saint-Anne as the crown, Quebec City as the heart, and the Beaupre, or beautiful fields between them, as the soul of the area. The Basilica of Saint-Anne de Beaupre is a shrine for millions of pilgrims seeking miracles. And nearby Montmorency Falls has a spiritual beauty all its own. Crown, heart, soul, and the hands that prepare and serve the food of the region embody its cultural traditions. The fertile lands along the St. Lawrence and the rich earth of the island of Orleans just off the shore fed the early settlers and continue to shape the cuisine of Quebec. Quebecers' intimacy with food is considered a privileged way of staying in touch with a glorious past. It's no wonder the region surrounding Mont Saint Anne, considered from the earliest days as the breadbasket of the province, is home to a movement to preserve Quebec's culinary traditions. Fertile soil brought riches early to the island of Orleans. 400 years ago, there were more people living here than in Montreal or Quebec City. It's not just the breadbasket, but the gourmet produce, herb, and edible flower garden of a province that views fine cuisine as an inherited right, not a luxury. Historic estates and farmhouses are now landmark restaurants or gourmet food producers, making a tasting tour of the island irresistible. It's more than the range of island products that appeals. The atmosphere in the island, nothing ever changed. The quaint countryside atmosphere of the island. Still in the island today, if you go there, you'll find no supermarkets, no department stores, lo no large stores. Everything is like the way it was. Hundreds of houses on the island of Orleans are classified historical houses. And that means that in a certain village of St. Famille is where you probably get the largest concentration of old houses. And some of them go back to, as I said before, the 1600s and 1700s and they provide a charming atmosphere today. Even though it borders the St. Lawrence River, this region isn't exactly maritime. Nevertheless, it draws upon the fruits of many seas to produce some of the finest smoked salmon in the country. Grizzly smoked salmon cures fish from all of Canada's oceans. Smoking was a way for native people to preserve fish, but for grizzly, it's about heightening the succulent flavor of salmon and trout. We smoke fish first for the, the, the taste. We smoke uh, salmon and trout because uh, it's very popular in, in, uh, in the restaurant. You see what makes grizzly different for smoking is in Europe they use beech wood. Here we use maple wood, we use cherry wood and we use apple wood. But it makes the, the, the flavor a lot different. The enhanced flavor and delicate texture of smoked salmon are the qualities that endear it to discerning chefs. Grizzly smoked salmon consults some of Quebec's finest chefs and experiments with their own smoking techniques until they can satisfy the most demanding tastes and provide smoked salmon for some of the most elegant dishes served in fine restaurants across the country. Grizzly uses far less salt and lower temperatures than other manufacturers to maximize taste. First, when we receive the, the product, raw fish, we have inspection to make sure it's a very good quality product with the temperature, everything. And then we side it. Then we take the bone and the, the wings off. Then we cure it with a special the mix of spice and sea salt. And then we shower it because it's a dry cure. And then we put maple syrup to stop the cure. Then we put in the smoke oven for about between 24 to 48 hours. Then after that, we take the pin bone off, which is a bone from the head to the wing. There's about 30. Looks like a hair. Then we take the skin off. Then we freeze it at four degrees below, below to slice it. We put in the package, we vacuum it, we 
freeze it real fast. Then we put in a box and ready to the expedition. I just love grizzly smoked salmon because it's very light in salt. We taste the fish. It's moist, tender, and firm. When we come back, smoked salmon at the Chateau Mont Saint Anne and buzzing around a museum. Stay with us. Taste of life will be right back. The Chateau Mont Saint Anne is our fine dining choice today with executive chef Jose Merielo. The Chateau Mont Saint Anne is in a perfect location for its guests to enjoy the outdoor life, no matter what the season. Surrounding us is to golf and a great mountain with uh, 54 uh, ski slope that could be used in the summertime, uh, as a matter of fact, for the mountain biking. So the essence uh, is truly a resort with a lot of outdoor activities. Outdoor activities like the uh, snowmobiling. And by the way, everything here is in, in terms that it's close to the hotel or next to the hotel. Snowmobiling in, snowmobiling out. Skiing in, skiing out. Golfing in, golfing out. So everything is truly next to this hotel. That's the, uh, the essence of uh, this hotel. The Chateau is popular as a conference center for the outdoor activities when business is over and for the comfort indoors. Dining at Chateau Mont Saint Anne is a meeting of the relaxed country atmosphere indoors with the mountain outdoors that's only a pane of glass away. Still, there's no effort spared to make every dish the height of elegance. Executive chef Jose Merielo is from Martinique, but he's become a champion of preserving local culinary and food traditions. À l'hôtel Chateau Mont Saint Anne, c'est une cuisine régionale. The cuisine at the Chateau Mont Saint Anne, above all, is a regional cuisine. Why? Because we must use local foods and products from Quebec. This is how you create the best food possible for here. It's a cooking adventure, and this is so important to me. I helped establish a group here, a network that didn't exist before, to promote this area's products and create and recreate the culinary traditions. It means we cook with ingredients that are immediate, fresh, in ways that they used to cook with them, and in new ways, too. Chef José demonstrates his philosophy with this exquisite salmon dish. For a free copy of this exclusive recipe, visit our website or call us toll free. This dish has two parts, and for the first part we make the marinade. It's not difficult, but the flavors are unusual, with a puree of carrot, chopped chives, and some fresh dill, a little finely diced mango, and so on. We moisten the marinade with olive oil and mix it all together very well. And then of course we season. And the marinade is ready. And once we've got it done, we put it in the fridge until we're ready to use it. Now we are going to sear a fresh filet of salmon. This is a little difficult to do, so make sure you brush olive oil on the surface.
and you want a really hot grill and, and leave it just long enough to sear and mark the salmon. Then carefully turn the fillet 180 degrees to finish the pattern. Don't worry, the fillet isn't all cooked, we're just using the top layer. Very carefully cut a thin slice of the seared salmon. This is the hardest part. Put it on a plate and now you're done with the rest of the fillet. And now for the marinade, we put it on the sliver of seared salmon. And now we put it in the fridge. We want it to marinade about an hour. Now we take another filet of salmon. And cut off a couple of slices depending on how many servings you need. And then we chop it, first coarsely, and then we mince it to make a genuine salmon tartare, so you want to mince it very well. Then we scoop up the salmon, the knife's good for this, and, and put it in a bowl. And then of course we season it. Add a bit of olive oil, and some of the chives and dill again. We mix this up well, too. Once it's well mixed, we want to put it in a mold. We have here our little mold. Any small container will do, and we pack the tartare in the mold. Here's our marinated seared salmon. We put it carefully on our serving plate. And we unmold the tartare on top of it. Then to garnish with fresh herb, first a sprig of thyme, some pretty green herb oil or sauce, We drizzle some of the extra marinade over top. And I like to use edible flowers too. And maybe one more sprig of herb. Et voilà. Bon appétit. Enjoy. Bon appétit. After the break, a beehive of activity at the Bee Museum with mouth-watering sweets too. We'll be right back.
No one is quite sure when people first got past the bees to get to their honey, but everyone today agrees nature's original sweetener was well worth the effort. It's still a job left to experts, and some of them bring their expertise to the Bee Museum near Mont Saint Anne. Welcome to our Bee Museum. Uh, my name is Redmond. I'm one of the owners here. You know, we're four beekeepers owning the museum, four professional beekeepers, and together we're owning 5,000 hives. You know, it's a lot of bees because in one hive in July, the population will get to 60,000 bees, and they're all working for us. We're, we're lucky. Eh? And though they don't know it, thousands of those bees are teachers, educating the public about the amazing things that go on inside their hives. Each year we're receiving around 600 uh, groups, mostly scholar groups, and uh, that when they arrive, we're receiving them. We have a slideshow to explain them the life of bees and sometimes the private life of bees, as, we, as we've seen uh, before. And uh, so uh, they're going, we're, we're going to see the theoretical part first, and after we're going to see a practical one. And the way we found to bring them with us in the hives is called the bee safari. It's a tent, so people are well protected. And we open the hives and tell them about our, our uh, work. You know, they're interested uh, what, is, what kind of uh, working you do in a hive. So it's, uh, it's interesting because we're nearby. Sometimes we get stinging. It's part of the job. You know, beekeepers get stinging 10, 20 times a day. Depends on the weather. So we can explain them how to react. For them, it's interesting because it's different from the wasps and hornets. When they get stinging, they have to take off the stinger. So a few explanations like that. And after, what they love is to taste our honey. Like pollen is for the bees, the honey is a building block for the museum's own pastry chef and food experts, whose unlimited imaginations open up a whole new food and wine world of Quebec honey. A skiing trip to Mont Saint Anne is an unforgettable winter vacation, but as we've learned, there's so much more here. Four seasons of beauty, a history to capture your imagination, and a purely French-Canadian joie de vivre that warms the heart year-round. I'm Catherine Blythe for Taste of Life. We'll see you next time. Catherine Blythe's wardrobe by Sunny Choi. We stayed at the stunning Chateau Mont Saint Anne. The Lincoln Navigator is the official vehicle of Taste of Life. Visit us at tasteoflife.com or call us toll-free at 1-888-41-TASTE.